Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on bonding, and in particular, on the forces between molecules. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 7 of 7, covering forces between molecules. This is our final video on the topic of bonding. In the last lesson, we looked at the terms electronegativity, permanent dipoles and partial charges. Here are the key learning objectives for this session. First, we will look at intermolecular forces and their properties. Then, we will move on to permanent dipole-dipole forces, look at induced dipole-dipole forces, and finally we will cover hydrogen bonding. Here are the AQA specification points for this tutorial. Pause the video now to have a quick read through them before we begin. First, we will cover the differences between the forces in the molecules. An intermolecular force is a force present between molecules. It is not a bond. It is a force which is weaker than metallic bonds, ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Let's look at the three types of intermolecular force. The first one we'll look at are permanent dipole-dipole forces. The next are induced dipole-dipole forces. These are often referred to as van der Waals, dispersion or London forces. The final type of intermolecular force we'll cover today is hydrogen bonding. Permanent dipole-dipole forces are found between polar molecules. There are weak intermolecular forces between polar molecules called permanent dipole-dipole forces. These forces are between the delta charges of each polar molecule in the compound. This figure shows how a polar liquid can be attracted by a charged rod. The attractive forces are always stronger than the repulsive forces between the rod and the molecules. If you charge a rod with a cloth by rubbing it and then place it next to water, the liquid will be attracted to the rod. This is because a polar liquid like water is also made up of polar molecules. The charges on the rod will attract the oppositely charged ions in the water. For example, if the rod is charged with a negative charge, it will attract the delta positive charges of the water. Induced dipole-dipole forces are present between all atoms and all molecules that exist. As we mentioned earlier, they can also be called van der Waal forces, dispersion forces and London forces. When two atoms that are non-polar come towards each other, the electron clouds of these atoms will repel each other. This causes a sudden displacement of the electrons in one atom to move to one side, causing a temporary dipole. A temporary dipole induces other temporary dipoles in neighbouring atoms and molecules. This induces a domino-like effect. The two temporary dipoles are attracted together by induced dipole-dipole forces, also known as London forces. These are shown here on the diagram.
The dipole is temporary as it is constantly being created and destroyed, but there is always a dipole present at any given time. For example, lots of iodine molecules can form a lattice structure at room temperature. When iodine exists in a solid state, the molecules of iodine are held together by weak induced dipole-dipole forces in a lattice structure, even though the iodine molecule itself consists of a strong covalent bond. A hydrogen bond is only formed when hydrogen forms a covalent bond with nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. As nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine are more electronegative than hydrogen, they attract the electron pair in the covalent bond with hydrogen towards themselves, as shown here. This forms a polar bond. The orange electrons shown here are part of the covalent bond. They are closer to the oxygen since it has a higher electronegativity. The turquoise electrons are the lone pairs on the oxygen. We learnt about lone pairs in one of our previous videos. A high charge density of hydrogen means that it has a high charge concentrated in a small area. The high charge density of hydrogen enables it to form hydrogen bonds with the lone pairs found on nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine atoms of a neighbouring molecule. Hydrogen bonding is indicated by the presence of the amine groups or hydroxyl groups. Both amine groups and hydroxyl groups will contain one of the more electronegative elements. These are nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. They will also contain a hydrogen. Both the amino and hydroxyl groups will have hydrogen bonding. This is shown here and here. Let's look at our next learning objective, covering melting and boiling points of molecular substances. This diagram shows the strength of each of these forces. Permanent dipole-dipole forces are stronger than London forces, but weaker than hydrogen bonds. London forces are the weakest of the three intermolecular forces we're going to discuss today. They are found in almost every molecule. Non-polar molecules only have London forces, but polar molecules will have London forces plus many others. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest force. The strength of the intermolecular forces can determine the boiling points of certain molecules. The forces often need to be broken upon boiling or melting. The strength of the London forces is determined by three factors. The first is molecular size, the second is molecular shape, and the third is molecular distance. Let's look at molecular size first. A larger molecule will contain more electrons. Therefore, it consists of larger electron clouds. The greater the number of electron clouds, the stronger the induced dipole-dipole forces, or London forces. This means that more energy is required to break the stronger induced dipole-dipole forces, meaning that the boiling and melting points will be higher. Now let's look at molecular shape. Unbranched, straight-chain alkanes can pack together better than branched-chain alkanes. If the molecules can pack together more closely, then they will have stronger intermolecular forces between them. When there is a larger distance between molecules, 
the London forces between the molecules will get weaker. The structure of pentane is shown here. It is a long, straight, thin molecule with a large surface area. Let's compare its boiling point to 2 methyl pentane. Pentane is going to have a higher boiling point than 2 methyl pentane. This is because it has stronger London forces as the molecule is an unbranched and straight chain. This figure shows that the boiling point of straight chain alkanes is not only higher than the branched chain alkanes, but it also increases as the chain gets longer. This is because as the chain gets longer, there are more electrons present, hence the stronger the induced dipole-dipole forces between molecules. This will also cause the boiling point to increase. For example, if we are comparing propane and ethane, you would say that neither have permanent dipole-dipole forces nor hydrogen bonding, but both of them have got London forces. The ethane is going to have stronger London forces. In our previous example, we didn't just talk about London forces, but we went through all three types. This is really important to remember in exam questions. Let's move on to our final specification point, covering the importance of hydrogen bonding. As we've already mentioned, hydrogen bonding is the strongest type of intermolecular force. You need the largest amount of energy to overcome these forces, which means that they lead to a higher melting and boiling point. This figure shows that the boiling point of hydrogen fluoride is a lot higher than the boiling point of the other hydrogen halides. This is due to the presence of hydrogen bonding, which increases the boiling point significantly. The boiling point increases from hydrogen chloride to hydrogen iodide. This is because the London forces are getting larger with the bigger size of the molecule. Let's fill in this table to see the differences in the bonding of these compounds. Let's look at the London forces first. So for hydrogen fluoride, they do have London forces, but they will be weak. They are also present in hydrogen chloride and hydrogen bromide and they are strongest in hydrogen iodide. Let's look at the permanent dipole-dipole forces. These are present in all of these. Finally, Let's look at hydrogen bonds. These are only present in hydrogen fluoride, but are not present in the others. From this table, we can see that the London forces will increase in strength as the molecules increase in size. You always need to make sure that you're giving specific answers in exams as to how bonds may arise. Diagrams are always a good way to gain marks in an exam. You can use the diagrams we've shown in this video to help you out. Now let's look at hydrogen bonding in ice. When water exists in the liquid state, the molecules are closer together. However, when water freezes into ice, which is in the solid state, more hydrogen bonds will be formed. The molecules in ice are further apart than the molecules in liquid water because they are arranged in a regular lattice structure. This makes ice 
less dense than water. Let's recap that again. When water exists in the liquid state, the molecules are closer together. However, when water freezes into ice, which happens to be in the solid state, more hydrogen bonds are formed. This figure shows that the water molecules are further apart from each other than in water. This gives ice a more open structure, making it less dense than water. We've now covered all the AQA specification points for this section. If you're unsure about anything we've been through, feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch it. We've now completed Lesson 7. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-Level Chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.